Welcome to the first tutorial of the Introduction to Statistics class at Granite State College. I'm Elizabeth Dalton and I'm going to be doing a brief overview of how to complete Project 1 concerning learning from data. In my example, I'm going to be looking at the person Ada Lovelace. She was a, a real person, a historical person, but she died at the age of 36 in the year 1852. And so what I'm going to be looking at is a hypothetical, if she had lived, where would she be living in 1861? Here's what we know about Ada Lovelace. She was born in 1815 in St. George, London. She married in 1835 to a man who at the time was known as William King and became the Earl of Lovelace. So his full title became William Lord Earl Lovelace King. And that was the point at which she became Ada Lady Lovelace or the Countess of Lovelace. In 1841, she was living in St. James Square, Westminster, London. In 1851, Brighton, Sussex. And again, she died in 1852, Marylebone, London. So for our first project, we are asked to decide what region of London, what neighborhood of London, our character that we are writing about would choose to live identify at least two variables that might be used to make a decision like that, indicate whether those variables are quantitative or categorical, and describe the sampling method that we think we will use to make that decision. A little bit of background about Ada Lovelace is probably a good idea. She was considered the first computer programmer. She wrote about algorithms to be used on a machine called the Analytical Engine, created by Charles Babbage. Charles Babbage was a researcher and inventor in the early and mid 1800s, and he developed a machine called the Analytical Engine. Prior to that, he had developed the Difference Engine. The Difference Engine was able to form repetitive calculations, such as the creation of statistical tables. However, a more general purpose machine called the Analytical Engine was something he was working on, and Ada Lovelace was the first person to really understand what he was trying to do. He had given us a talk. It had been recorded in Italian. Ada Lovelace took the notes from the recording and translated them into English and added her own notes, which turned out to be three times as long as the original work. And those contained the algorithms and examples of computer programming that were considered the first computer programs. Ada Lovelace was the only legitimate child of Lord Byron, famous poet and his wife. This is the only woman he actually married. He had other children, but they were born out of wedlock. This marriage lasted less than a year after Ada was born. Ada's mother was very concerned that Ada would inherit the insanity that she attributed to her father, and so she had her tutored in mathematics. Ada appears in the census records of the day. This site, Ancestry.co.uk, is the UK version of Ancestry.com. And a lot of information is available here. You can get a free account for 14 days by registering here, and you can look for information about a variety of different historical figures or people who might be in your own family tree. And here we can see that Ada appears in birth, marriage, and death indexes, in census, and various other kinds of documents. These are examples of the census records that are available for Ada Lovelace. And as an example, she died in 1852, so this is the last time that she appears in the census record, but we're going to look earlier in 1841. This is her census record, and at this point she was already married to the Earl of Lovelace and had three children at the ages of five, three years and six months, and two. Ancestry.co.uk provides access to the original census records. So this was a form that was filled out, and this is the, the early version. This is the 1841 version of the census, which doesn't provide a lot of information. Here's the Earl of Lovelace. Here's Ada, Countess of Lovelace. She's listed as being 25 years old. There isn't a lot of other information about them. There is the fact that his occupation was listed as independent. That means he was independently wealthy. And here's a transcription of the information that's available at this time. There's quite a lot of speculation about Ada Lovelace, and here is what I consider to be a very entertaining webcomic about her, and describes how her mother 
trained her in mathematics, and then she met Charles Babbage, examined his demonstration machine, and began to theorize about how this could, could be used to perform a variety of abstract calculations that could be programmed and could be changed on the fly. However, again, Ada died at the age of 36 due to uterine cancer. And that's terrible! I can only imagine that she would have had a fantastic career if she had lived. So I imagine that I'm using a time machine. I'm going to take a surgeon or maybe some technology that I get from the future back in time to 1852 or even 1851, curate his cancer, she will go on to work with Charles Babbage, and he'll actually finish the machines that he started, and they'll both be famous, and this will be a wonderful thing. She probably will not, however, still be living with her husband. And this is where Ada was living for most of the time period that she was alive, her house down here on St. James Square. However, this was her husband's house, and in 1844, she ended up meeting this man, John Cross, the son of Andrew Cross, who was a scientist, he introduced her to betting on horses. And before she died, she ended up confessing to her husband that she'd had an affair with this man. He was also married. And her husband actually left her before she died. So, if she lived, she probably would not still be living in St. James's Square. She would probably be living somewhere else.